Hello everybody. Welcome to another exciting episode of Family with Judy. With me, I have Ken the drone guy and Judy the family lawyer. And my name is Carol. Judy, mm. intermarriages have become commonplace <laughs> today. Uh, so what advice would you have for people who are intermarried or those who, inter who are intending to get intermarried? Okay. So let me first share my understanding mm -hmm. of intermarriage. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, it is a marriage across uh, one divide or rather. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so it could be ethnic, it could be racial, it could be social, it could even be religious. Mm -hmm. But let me even start by saying that even just by the fact that you marry somebody else out of yourself, that in itself is in a way intermarriage. <clears throat> okay, but the ones that we know of, the ethnic, the racial, the social, and the religious, what I would tell people is to be intentional, is to appreciate that uh, people are defined by the situations that bring them up or mm -hmm. the situations that they are brought up in. So that if it's uh, across a particular race, there are things, there are stereotypes, there are things you need to be aware of. Mm -hmm. So that you're more sensitive, so that you also know what mm -hmm. to expect from other people. The same thing with ethnic, okay? When you marry across, there are certain things that are expected and you need to be aware of them. And it's the same thing even social, when you marry across the social divide. Mm -hmm. I think it's even so, when you marry ac across relig religious um, divides, mm -hmm. you know, as the case may be. But let me say this, in the end, what is most important is alignment. If you have the same basic common values, mm -hmm. you know where your blood runs deep red. Yes. If you're the same, then it is likely that you will overcome any other differences mm -hmm. because I think that the other differences are superficial. Okay. Sure. So for me, if you got your values aligned, you can be able to survive anything. Mm -hmm. But having said that, it is important to appreciate people's different cultures and the effect that they have on you, mm -hmm. the stereotypes, mm -hmm. because you'd be under pressure from your families mm -hmm. and uh, appreciating them just makes it easier for you to navigate them. There are things like uh, naming, you know, how you name children, for example. In certain communities, I'll uh, talk about the Kikuyu, for example, mm -hmm. it is expected, and I think it's a practice still in many families, even in what you would call Correct. modern families, that you will name from the paternal side, mm -hmm. okay, and then go to the maternal side. Mm -hmm. And I know that people don't always comply with that, and that's, that, that's okay, okay? Mm -hmm. But then you need to be aware whether the person you, you're intermarrying, if you're marrying from that community, is going to be free about the naming of the children Correct. or whether uh, they're going to be stuck with it. You know, mm -hmm. They're going to be stuck about it so that yes. you don't get surprised about <clears throat> that. There are certain communal practices that you need to know whether you will be fine with them. And I appreciate mm -hmm. that there are many things that can happen around you and it doesn't quite matter. You let other people be what they want to be. Correct. But you must know whether the family you're marrying into or the person that you're marrying considers some of those very defining, some of those practices mm -hmm. very defining. Mm -hmm. Because if they are, they're going to do exactly that. They're going to define you. Now, uh, Judy, there yeah. are those stereotypes you've mentioned yeah. and yeah. Um, it's... If you think about it, yeah. um, we were actually having a discussion earlier where we were saying, see, they stem from somewhere. I guess the question becomes, mm -hmm. well, how do you, how do stereotypes define this union it's coming from different, within intermarriages? Okay. So um, I would say that you need to be aware mm. because the stereotypes are out there. Yes. For those of us who come from the community I come from, mm. one of the stereotypes we have to deal with Mm -hmm. is that money is not the most important thing to us. It's mm -hmm. the only thing, okay? <laughs> yes. So if somebody mm -hmm. is marrying mm -hmm. outside of the Kikuyu community, mm -hmm. perhaps they need to know mm -hmm. that there is such a stereotype. Yes. And the fact that you're aware, it means that even if people said that about you, you take it lightly. Yes. It is just that, yes. a stereotype. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Little you can do about it. Okay. Right. And it doesn't define you. Yes. You know? Mm-hmm. So many times people get offended mm-hmm. I, by things that are said about them. Mm-hmm. But if you ha- if you had the opportunity to think that you are likely to be judged in a certain way because you come from a certain community, I think it is less offensive. Mm-hmm. Okay? Mm-hmm. Yes. And you can live with it. Like you said, so yeah. the, the, the stereotypes, to mm-hmm. a certain degree, they... Mm-hmm. they they may define mm. those in an inter yeah. who are intermarried or yeah. in who intend to. However, mm. if you're aligned, mm-hmm. then no, absolutely, mm. because being aligned means that you see me beyond what you see. Mm-hmm. You see what I mean. Mm-hmm. You see me beyond the community mm-hmm. that I, I I represent. Okay. You see me beyond my exterior. You see me <clears throat> beyond the pimples on my face. Mm-hmm. You see mm-hmm. beyond my short hair. Mm-hmm. You see you see the person in me. Mm-hmm. Okay, so if you can see the person in me, then you ought to know that those stereotypes mm-hmm. have no bearing with who I am. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Amazing. Yes. It appears, Judy, that a couple in an intermarriage has to work uh, harder than a couple in an intermarriage, so to speak. Uh, maybe making decisions about the language to be used at home or the religion that the house or the family will adopt. Mm -hmm. Interesting. But I started by telling you that even though we define intermarriages as those between people across a definite divide, Mm -hmm. their marriages are actually across a divide because you're marrying another person that's not you. Okay, and you're marrying a person brought up differently from yourself. So I think that so long as you marry, you have hard work, you have a lot of work to do. So long as you get married, you have a lot of work to do. Because even those you could consider to be from the same social strata, even those you could consider to be from the same ethnic community or from the same race, they are not you. They have been raised differently. And that's what we started by saying, Mm -hmm. the recognition that our families shape us, they socialize us, they make us who we are. Okay. And therefore, so long as a person is brought up by another family, there is quite a bit of work to do in understanding one another. What Mm -hmm. makes the difference for me across uh, the cultures, across the ethnic uh, divide and everything else is the basic alignment. That said, uh, there are some things that you would le- you will need to negotiate more and in in uh, intermarriages, like uh, for example, you know ethnic, like we said, you need to know mm-hmm. about the culture of the people. But I think that's less weight to carry than if you are not aligned at the basic common value place. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, like I wonder how um, mm-hmm. within intermarriages. Mm-hmm. And let's go with the faith section. I wonder how they, how is it chosen mm-hmm. that we shall raise our children within this particular faith versus another one? That's an interesting one. And it depends from family to family. There are those yes. who will not marry outside of their religion. Mm-hmm. It's critical. Mm-hmm. But there are those who are willing to say, and have seen couples like those, mm. let us expose our children to both religions. And ah. when they are grown up, mm. they will decide mm-hmm. which one to follow. So we have enough couples of mm-hmm. those. But we also have those ones who say, absolutely not. Mm. If I'm Christian, I can only marry a Christian. A Christian yeah. If I'm Muslim, I can only marry uh, I'm, uh, a Muslim mm-hmm. and Hindus and not of you. So for the ones that decide to intermarry, and for those for whom it's not a condition mm. to convert, mm-hmm. because if it's a condition for mm-hmm. you to convert to marry the other person, mm. then you must expect mm. exactly. that you must live mm. that life. Mm. But for those who for whom it's not a condition to convert, I have seen them, you know, very open. Oh, yeah. Mm. Uh, intermarriages actually promote tolerance, in tolerance between cultures and between religions and the different sections of the society. Because uh, one side gets to understand the other side, where they're coming from, even the stereotypes. They get to mm. demystify those stereotypes. Absolutely. I couldn't agree with you more. Because it takes one to see the other side, to know 
that it's as, as uh, normal as abnormal mm-hmm. as, as theirs. Mm-hmm. Okay, it is what are we always told that uh, the grass is always greener mm-hmm. on the other side, yeah. mm-hmm. and you get to the other side and you're like, you know, it's not so green after all. So it's the same thing with intermarriages. Mm-hmm. People look a certain way when you have not interacted with them. Mm-hmm. You see, mm-hmm. families look a certain way when you have not interacted with them. Mm-hmm. Cars look a certain way when you have not mm-hmm. entered them. But when you enter, you're like, you know, it's normal. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? It's a five-seater. Mm-hmm. It has uh, the steering wheel in, the, in a certain place, exactly. a gear in a certain place. Mm-hmm. Nothing quite changes. And you have a pedal for you know, your gas, you know, your exactly. petrol, your brakes. And a, a, exactly. <laughs> yeah, and and I think thing. it's the same thing with intermarriage. Mm-hmm. So I think we demystify mm-hmm. the ethnic divide the ratio divide, mm-hmm. the social divide, mm-hmm. and everything else. Mm-hmm. So it is, it is a good. And anyway, it's, it's the way forward. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's the way forward. We cannot uh, be in our tribal cocoons, you know, where we started from, you know, many, many years yes. ago. Yes. 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 Yeah. And 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 I think the, the generation that is coming up today, mm-hmm. they are more attuned with that. Um, yeah. I think just because of, like we said from the very yeah. beginning, that yeah. they're, they're, we see more intermarriages today. Yeah. When you go to a school, you'll yeah. find literally mm-hmm. everybody from mm-hmm. every aspect of mm-hmm. life. And so they have grown up a whole lot more together yeah. than, for example, sometimes, yeah. like me having grown up in Kanyanyane, mm-hmm. I mostly interacted with mm-hmm. my ethnic group. What divides us is more social mm-hmm. than biological. Society in a bid to protect itself develops certain stereotypes to sort of fence in its people in the best way it knows how. The good thing is that those fences are not permanent. Mm. As culture is dynamic, so are those fences that society puts in place to ring fence itself. We no longer can dream or think of getting people to where they were in the 60s, where they feared or had very strong stereotypes Mm -hmm. of people of other communities where where we are today.